Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And more is a blow! Good morning. Welcome to part five of my uh, Easy Go Workhorse Utility 1200 Series Robin Wisconsin Fuji Subaru Engine Rebuild. <laughs> um, yesterday's episode, I spent six hours working on this thing. Uh, I was spent. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sore today. Uh, but today we're going to try to run the starter. I finally did get that nut on there tight enough with some shims to make up the space that it wasn't moving anymore. So uh, I think now the starter turns the engine. So we're going to find out today if whether or not we have spark. Uh, we'll take the spark plugs out and check them out. We'll drain the gas tank because it has like <laughs> years and years and years of bad gas in it. It's like black. Um, and we'll test to see if the fuel pump actually works. If not, we'll have to replace it along with maybe the fuel lines. So I recharged the battery inside here as we put one in yesterday. And this is the Mercedes-Benz battery. I replaced my battery recently. And uh, let, me, let me turn the uh, starter and we'll see what we, uh, we find. Okay. So I'm going to put uh, these channel locks and touch the, um, the two together, the solenoid. This should spin, the engine should spin, and we're gonna pay attention to the output to the carburetor, uh, the fuel pump right here, and see if fuel comes out of here in a pulse way. You ready? Look at that engine spins and everything but it doesn't seem like it's um the battery's that strong it's kind of smoking over here too let's try something spray some carb cleaner into the intake manifold let's choke it Let's try to see if it uh, ignites. See, the battery doesn't seem like it, uh, it's turning it for a long period of time. It, it wants to like uh, slow down after only four or five revolutions. And it didn't ignite at all, so maybe we're not getting any spark. The battery's at about 12.2. I'm gonna continue charging it while I'm messing with this today. Uh, I did not tighten the bolts down on the uh, terminals. That sometimes makes a difference. You could just pull it off if you want. I'm gonna take the spark plugs out and check it out. Uh-huh. So old, just tightening the bolts broke it. Took the left spark plug out, looks fine, but it's dry. Since I sprayed fluid in there, it should be kind of wet, moved it around. Test for spark. Nothing, no spark. Other spark plug, same. Good shape, but dry. So here's the ignition coil. Wires traced down to the ignition coil. And uh, I've never worked on one of these. These are like uh, electronic ignition coils that you get a spark not from the movement of the magneto but actually it's powered by the battery, right? I don't know where that goes. And look, there's a wire on the bottom of this ignition coil. 
goes through here and comes out here and it's attached to nothing so if this was attached to power right it i would assume it's positive power because it's white if it was negative power it would be black so i think i need power to this ignition coil for this to get spark problem is where does this lead to you know what i mean there is no wires here got a wire here leading to the uh fuse box which I tested, doesn't have any power to it. The only one that has power to it right now is this one. This one right here. I measured, I uh, multimetered this wire here and this has 12, 12 volts going to it right now, constant. But you, do you want constant power going to this or do you only want it when you step on the accelerator, you know? And this doesn't go back, see? You can step on the pedal and it moves, but it doesn't go back. So I guess I'm going to try to get a wire from this constant power to this wire here <laughs> so that I could see if that there's any spark. Okay, I, uh, I crawled underneath the uh, gas pedal to see what's under here. And if I uh, step on the gas pedal, that moves. I don't see any electrical connection to it. So that, because I, I figured out that once you step on the gas pedal it starts the engine <laughs> but there is nothing connected to this that would start the engine right am i missing some kind of a module connected to this to some electrical box whatever that gives it a signal to start the engine and then i came over here to where the wiring is um there's a part here that's cut it looks like three wires in there. I'm going to have to cut this assembly, uh, this tie off, so I can kind of strip it to see how many wires are in here and where do they lead. I stripped away the wire and it's a red and black wire. Um, I don't know where it goes. I think uh, part of it leads into there. So the black and red wire is probably there, right there, which uh, I would think is part of the ignition switch. This was a harness that I found in the bed when I picked it up. I am not sure whether or not this harness is supposed to belong here because uh, that, that ending there doesn't lead to anything. See? There's nothing like it around here. Let me let me know guys if this is part of this. No idea. So what bothers me is uh yeah, I know I I have to figure out where that current comes from, right? But um when you step on the pedal, this moves, but it doesn't return and it bothers me, you know? It bothers me a lot. And I figured I saw a spring here. I hold my hand here, step on the pedal, it moves, and if my hand is there, and pull it back, it'll push back. So it looks like this spring is just not strong enough, and it's on this bend here. Well, what if I just bent this so that it has more um, tension? That would fix my problem really quick, wouldn't it? If I just bend it back, you have more tension on the spring. If I step on a pedal, does it come back? It does come back. Hey! <laughs> I, now I feel much better. See, a slight adjustment like that. Now it does pop back. Goes all the way all the way back. 
I'm gonna bend it some more to give it more tension. So uh, looking at this more, um, doing some testing obviously, uh, I hooked up this live wire to clamp that goes onto the positive, okay? It leads to this thing right here. And so when I touch the trigger on the solenoid, that's what moves the, um, starts the starter and the engine moves. We have no spark. I took the live wire and I connected it to this. Uh, this has 12 volts coming out of it. And then when I tried to hook up a line to the ignition coil, I tested the circuit and there was nothing. But when I disconnected it, it was 12 volts. But when I attach it to the white wire that goes into the ignition coil, there's no current going to it. So is this a ground, you know? And then I tested the, the circuits here, the white and red go into the ignition coil. Even this pigtail over there, nothing. I get no power. So that all leads to this stuff right here, you know? Um, then looking over here, I found that this wire, the gray wire coming from the front, was also stripped. Uh, the green wire is not connected to anything, and this, these two black and white ones were cut. So when you trace that, it actually looks like, and I could be wrong, there is a um, green, white, red, and black there, but there's a yellow also, which this doesn't have. <laughs> so I'm really confused, you know? I might have to go and study the wiring diagram, but it appears that the solenoid works, and when you put power to the trigger, it does move the starter. But I don't see the apparatus that controls the, the, the pedal. The accelerator pedal is not hooked up to anything that would cause it to make, to trigger power to this. You see, that's what makes sense. Is that if you step on this, right, is what everybody says, that once you step on this, the engine starts and it moves. That's how you start it, with power. However, I don't see any mechanism under there connected to power that would trigger power to that, to move this. I just don't see it. There's nothing down there, unless I'm missing something down there, you know? Or something's not connected. I just don't know enough about this to figure out uh, what, how that works, you know? And how to get power to the uh, ignition coil so that we could start this damn thing, because it has no spark. Without power to the ignition coil, you're not gonna get spark. I tried to put power to it, but it doesn't seem to work. Just to remove the bolt for the gas tank, I was gonna remove the gas tank so I can drain it. But uh, this looks like there's no way to remove it. It is like in here, and these panels here are riveted on, so you couldn't even move it more than that. Because this bracket's in the way and it's welded on. I guess I'm gonna have to try to drain this another way. I guess I could slowly soak it up. <laughs> Lacrosse stick. Look at that, it's like varnish, sticky. Ugh. Yes, I'm sure there was an easier way to do this, but I don't have a pump. And somebody told me not to use a vacuum cleaner because I'll uh, blow up something. Is this like the most dirtiest thing you've ever seen me do? This is completely crazy. I don't know why I'm doing it. OK, 
Okay, after I clean the gas tank, uh, the pipe, the tube that sucks the gas into the fuel pump broke. And so it fell down. Fell into the gas tank in pieces, several pieces. So now I don't know what to do. Try to remove this and fix it. This is old, I'm just gonna break it. threaded, screwed it in like that. I'm gonna try to fish what's, what fell in there out. Some duct tape. There's some right there. It's so sticky. Here we go. I replaced that pipe somehow. You hope. Got new hose, new fuel filter, drained, new fuel line going down. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on the uh, ignition coil because my lack of knowledge of how this ignition coil works and how it's powered is preventing me from getting this started because we have no spark. We have crank, right? Uh, got our carburation worked out. Just have no spark because of that. Um, the electrical wiring, <laughs> I have no idea. It's all spaghetti to me, you know? Uh, but uh, we cleaned out the gas tank, it sucked and um, Got a new fuel filter worked out. But it still smells like piss. I'm gonna have to spray down the engine with something. So this is 30 second cleaner in this uh, bottle. And it's uh, basically for mold and mildew, but uh, has a lot of bleach in it. So I'm just gonna spray around the area where piss would gather, which is all the way on the bottom. I can smell the bleach already. Let's spray the bed too. <laughs> now the engine's definitely not going to start. <laughs> so we so today we um, figured out that the solenoid works. The starter turns the entire engine. We have no spark. We have electrical problems. Got about a dozen or so spliced wires that I have no idea where it goes to. Um, I gotta do some research on the ignition coil and see how that's powered. You know, uh, switched, unswitched, constant 12 volts. I have no idea, you know. Am I missing modules and wiring harnesses? Probably. So uh, the only thing that's preventing us from turning over this engine is spark. We have no spark. Um, Cleaned out the gas tank, very messy job. Got some new fuel lines going into the existing fuel pump. We'll try it out once we get this started and see if that fuel pump works. If not, we'll swap it out with another one. And I uh, disinfected it with uh, mold and mildew cleaner so it doesn't smell like piss anymore. If it continues to smell like piss, I'll have to do something different. But uh, I don't want it to smell like piss because I eventually do want to roll this into the garage. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on part five of this Easy Go Workhorse 1200 series Fuji Subaru Wisconsin Robin two-cylinder engine. Uh, it cranks, starter seems to work, uh, just got no spark. Got to figure out the electrical part of it and see why the ignition coil doesn't work. Uh, I've never messed with an ignition coil like that before. Plus, I haven't had an, ex I don't have an ignition switch or the keys yet, you know? So we're far away from driving around the block, obviously, but baby steps. Stay tuned for the next uh, part six of this Easy Go Golf Cart project. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hi, Henry.
it's Andy from the UK, aka Mower Wizard. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.